Hi, uh, my name is Xiao Yan. Uh, I'm a research staff member at IBM TJ Watson Research Center. Today, I'm gonna give some demo on pair, IBM Pairs. It's a big scale, large um, geospatial data and analytics platform. So today, I will quickly go over the uh, sign up process and then give some example, live examples for you doing the query on the platform. And then in the end, I will demonstrate uh, the API call using REST client. So Pairs, the website is uh, pairs.ies.ibn.com. IES stands for research. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact uh, admin account, pairs at us.ibn.com. So let's get to it. Okay, the Pairs uh, web page here, there on the left hand side, uh, there are links to the user menu, as you can see. The user menu, you can find uh, pretty much everything you need to know about how to use it, how the design, and, and uh, the details of each data set. And then we also have this tutorial video will be hosted here as well. And our sy uh, system maintenance weekly uh, schedule is 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. On the right hand side, here is where you can sign up for a new account for IBMers and uh, non profit uh, academic users. You can request an account. We need your work email and your institute's name because the approval process involves validate the email versus the institute. And we'll love to hear about. Uh, your interest in use pairs for. And once you say uh, subscribe, it should bring you to the page. Uh, this is a subscription page. It should send you an email, say we're processing your request. Usually this takes less than 24 uh, hours uh, in a business day. And then once the account is approved, you'll get a welcome to IBM Pairs email and you need to use the link there to activate your account. Uh, basically, you need to set your password. And the link is only um, valid for one, one click. So if uh, the second time you try to use the same link, it will not work. It will give you an invalid link. This is for security con concerns, so the link is only activated for once. But if you already use it, and then for some reason don't remember your password, you can uh, reset your password. It will bring you back to the setting password page. All right. Okay, so let's uh, get started. Okay. Your login is your email address. Here a few main menus. Uh, the query page lets you define the query conditions. Uh, the jobs page um, show you all the queries you have uh, done. And um, because this is a big data retrieval, you actually don't need to uh, wait around for the query to complete. You can log out and log in. Uh, the query will be safe under your account. Uh, metadata, I'm going to go into this a little bit because it's explained the architecture of the data. First is data set. As you can see, these are available data set like ECNWF, European weather, uh, elevation in the US, global weather model uh, for NOAA, uh, Crosscape is historical crop planting map in US, I think 30 meter resolution. We also have St. John uh, data set we're experimenting. And um, MODIS, we have global satellite coverage of MODIS, uh, two different products. and. Um, Prison is a historical weather in in U United States. You can go back, I think, about ten years. Um, I've been ana analytics. This is uh, where we we actually can develop new models and put it back on the system for user to use. This one is called reference evapotranspiration. And climate forecast is uh, based on NOAA's CFS model. And it's a long-term forecast, um, about six months lookout. Um, this one, the SMT self learning West model, is our stati statistical weather forecasting model for short term in the United States. 
And then focus is、um, also United States、uh, weather focus for Norway. And then inside data set, inside each data set, there is a data layer. So, for example,、um, uh, like uh, let me pick one that has、uh, a lot of parameters.、Um, USA weather. You can see these are the parameters, like the wind, precipitation, ground pressure, solar irradiance,、uh, relative humidity, and temperature. And these are called data layer. Okay, so data set and data layer. And then data table is something new we are、um, developing. It's gonna be able to host Internet of Things IoT、uh, sensor data. So basically, it can host you know a point、uh, data that、uh, has a very long、uh, temporal、uh, series. So that one is not ready. So、uh, but it's coming up soon. Data region. This one is mostly for satellite data. So, for example, satellite data is、uh, going by tiles. What it means is、uh, just like a, a snapshot of one part of the Earth, and you can look up, like, see. Okay, if you know the tile of the area you're interested, in, you can take a look. See, okay, is that tile available、uh, in the database? So, for Modis, it's horizontal tile number seven. For example, here is the number seven and vertical tile number five. And it shows you the center of the tile, the latitude and longitude.、Um, so far, for Modis, I think we have all the tiles. It's a global coverage; it's complete. And the bottom one is color table. Color table. This is where、um, you define the color skill you use for、uh, for the data. For example, blue. Maybe you want the blue、um, color skill for the blue spectrum. For example, in satellite. Uh, you can associate them.、Uh, what you do is, I think it's in the,、uh, in the,、um, in somewhere in the data, data maybe in the data layer.、Um, you actually can associate that. And of course, administration. You can change your password.、Um, under help, there are three menu.、Uh, one is the user menu, so you can access、um, PS menu inside that your account as well. And then the second one is the tutorials. So here, in addition to the demo video, we also have the introduction. The introduction, hopefully you already watched that one. It covers the design, the concept, and the architecture of of pairs. Okay. And then on the bottom is the acknowledgement to all the data sources we use、uh, in our system. Okay. So let's go back to the query page and go to submit new. <coughs> and as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, for、um, define a geospatial query, the first you thing you need to define is the spatial coverage. So it can be a single point, you know, a point anywhere in the world, and it can be a polygon. A polygon,、uh, you know, you preloaded. The polygon shapes, and it can be an area. You can draw a little rectangle and define an area. Okay,、um, I'll get into a little bit more detail. So let's take a look at just single point for now. Just click anywhere, so it will show the latitude, longitude. And for this one, I want to demonstrate something that's, ah,、uh, you know, how fast you can get a lot of point data, like six months ahead. Um. For example, for for the weather,、um, climate forecast, okay, long-term forecast, and you can choose all the parameters in there and say submit. And this should come back、uh, right away because the point query really is、um, it's very、uh, very fast. For point query, you can demonstrate, you know, you can display your data in a table very easily like this. Um, so you see, you have the unit information, you have the value, and you can download the data in either CSV or in JSON format. So point data is is simple; it can be handled by、um, by that. And I want to point out to you is here on the bottom. This is a very useful item. This is what we call the API string. You can copy the API string to your clipboard, 
and that one you can use later on say okay i actually want to construct an api call routinely uh for my for my code so you can do that what you can do is you can just put in the um address uh, just attach the address here and add to the um, right before the the query string and then this one you can you can call in the api call i'll get to that and you can copy it and also you can send to query page what this does is it fill the you know the the conditions uh, you just uh, put in so you don't have to redo it if you want to modify something uh, this is make it very convenient okay all right so point query is very straightforward uh, for polygon the polygon here there are three different group of polygon uh, personal polygon these are the ones you uh, uploaded yourself so I'm going to show you how you upload your own polygon. It's under query. They say add area of interest and say personal. And you can see where <laughs> uh, all my polygon came from. Um, you can say add. Um, let me see, just say a test. I, I want to add a test. And right now, we actually only accept KML shapefile format so for example here I, I can pick pick either one anything right so I can say Italy okay and say add so this shapefile just got added and then when you go back to submit new and uh, your personal polygon it should show up yeah so test so basically showed up and of course you can also do um, um, group what I show you here is in my case I don't see any group um, when you were adding personal polygons you can um, you can actually decide to say okay I actually want to share this with a group for example this one I added here I share with group and this one will show up in everybody's uh, in the group under the group so that's a way of uh, collaboration with uh, with people so I have all my polygon share with the group so I think everybody should have this thing set of uh, polygon uh, under your group in my case is in under personal so the third one that's very very useful is in the repository so we actually uploaded all the shape file for all the states in United States so for example, you say USA, Alabama, yes, Alabama is here. And you can um, query any state name, just start typing, and it will show up for you. And you can use any of these to do your query, OK? So for example, the first thing is I actually have an interesting area in Florida. It's called DeSoto County. And it grows a lot of oranges. And I'm interested to look at look at the current or orange, you know, the conditions of the orange orange uh, uh, farms. So what I did was I choose for the time here. You can do an interval, and for me, I'm in only interested in the latest. So the the day here, it doesn't mean the time need to equal to this time. It means the time that's uh, closest to this time before before this um, time step. For interval, it's the same way. So you start a time and then uh, end a time be between these two. Okay. So I only want to get one file of uh, NDVI value. So this is under satellite and uh, product thirteen. There are two satellite equal uh, their equivalent aqua and terra and I will say okay let me take a look at the NDVI value but you can add a condition for example I can say okay I want to take a look at just the orange farms so you can pick historical crop planting uh, the crop, crop is equal to 212 is for oranges and submit the query and you see this is a new query we just submitted because it's initializing uh, <coughs> the query job, okay? 
and we can go back and take a look. I, I just want to see, okay, I'll show you one thing that's very useful. is once you, this job name is created, you can select it and then click the little edit job icon. It's a pencil button. Okay, and then it show up. It basically lets you, you can put in a na nickname, say this is orange. And the same thing, you can copy the API string Okay, so I'm just preparing myself for the API section here. So uh, you take a look. Is the query the type is polygon or uh, interval, or uh, date layers, etc. And the filtering condition is um, this layer equal to two one two. Okay, and then you can send it back to the query page to modify your query, just like I mentioned. Okay, so. It actually it's ready, so it's it's very really fast. And here you click here, it will show you the basically show the layer that we so this area has lots of orange fonts, it's uh and you can click on the on here, orange it actually happens to be orange color. <laughs> That's pretty fun. And if you click on the timestamp Basically, that's a file name. Um, the color scale will show up, right? So if I click on the orange area, it, sh it sh tells me it's 212. This one, because they are like 255 um, different crop, that's why the scale bar, we actually specifically made a scale bar for it so it can show up. I think 212, yeah, it's about the orange color. Orange color, yeah. So. And we also we query we actually query NDVI. This is normalized um, different specification index. It's uh, about the most you know useful parameter uh, for vegetation index that uh, you can gather from s satellite images. So if I click this one, it actually shows the NDVI of the orange field. So you notice that you know this uh, NDVI is not continuous. It doesn't show any other places. If I click here, um, it only show you the area that orange is planted. That's how we do filtering and joining da different data layers. And this can be very useful because you can monitor um, over a long time period historically and take a look at the uh, NDVI uh, historical data and learn the, you know, each year's yield versus the NDVI, um, how it grows. And you can even add all the historical weather conditions. Okay. So that's the first one. And by using that trick, we actually can do something very similar. For example, I have just uh, tested one of the query. It's for cornfield in Iowa. So I can just say edit job. And this one, I want to send it to query page. So I don't have to repeat uh, this def definition. Say spatial coverage, this is Iowa, if you're familiar with US uh, geography. And this is um, the, the day. I think uh, I was interested to take a look at last year's corn uh, around July time frame. And we're using the same thing, the NDVI value for MODIS. And here, um, the crop plant crop is equal to one. That's where corn is, and you can submit. And this one should give you the same results as that uh, the corn and DVI. So what I'm showing you here is uh, the crop is corn. Okay, it's um, crop mapping is very high resolution. Um, I think it's thirty meter resolution. So as you zoom in, you will see a lot of details there are a lot of corn fields. And then you can take a look at NDVI value uh, for the corn field. So again, you can learn a lot about what happened um, for the corn farms uh, year by year by accumulating all the data, all right? Mm, the, the other one that uh, I think I'm interested to show is um, composed a query in Kenya. This is for agriculture. 
So I do the things I want to edit the job, send it to query page. So I have the exact uh, same condition. So there's the Kenya is the polygon I chose. And the time frame is uh, for the weekend, for the past weekend. Um, and then there is uh, ECNWF is the weather because uh, I was interested to look at, take a look at the precipitation rate of, uh, of Kenya over the weekend. And I want to filter it with another condition is reference evapotranspiration and it's uh, the ECNWF based uh, model that's greater than five. So I'm interested to see the area that if I, you know, there's a lot of water loss from the plant and at the same time there's no um, uh, precipitation. I can submit this one and that's the new one we submit. Yeah. So I can show you quickly how uh, that looks like. We'll, we'll check the, the live uh, query a little later. Yeah, so this is, you know, um, I think uh, every three hours, take a look at the precipitation rate in Kenya. And you notice that some area didn't, re um, you know, didn't have anything because that's the area the evapotranspiration is um, is 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 less than five. So if I go to the next parameter, eva uh, evapotranspiration, and I can show you prove to you yes, everything shown here is has higher than five millimeter per day uh, water uh, evapotranspiration. Yeah. So um, another, I just, I also want to show you how to do, um, how to define an area query instead of using a predefined polygon. This is even straightforward, even um, easier. So for example, I'm interested to take a look at the area in Canada. That's the area this year, I think uh, in May, May 1st had an awful forest fire. And we can take a look before and after the forest fire for this area, what happened. So I found the area and go to the area definition. And I'm just going to make a rectangle selection. Okay, and then that will define the area for you. And then the day, um, because I know we were looking at around uh, May 1st, before and after May 1st. So I can do is, okay, I will do April 1st till the end of May, maybe till the beginning of June. Okay. I'll do 15th. And then we can take a look at the satellite. Uh, and EVI, of course, is very important. We'll see the vegetation index before and after. And we can also take a look at near infrared. This actually can tell you when it's burning, the near infrared is gonna be high, right? And also the red, uh, we can do both, okay? And submit, okay? Yeah, so, so this one is working. And I think um, the previous ones, I just wanna show you yeah, it's uh, it's working as as planned. Yeah. So that's how this works. Um, well, we'll uh, okay. I think we have more coming back. Yeah. So when while it's spinning, it really is just taking the data and generating the GeoTIFF file. So it can render on top of the map with visualization. And in our case, visualization is not not the the core of the of the project because there are so many really awesome um, softwares out there that can do GIS visualization really well, like QGIS S3. And so you we encourage uh, our users to download the data. This will be. Um, zipped uh, GOT files and use that to do first analytics and, and, and so on. 
Yeah, so that was the our uh, cone survey we did. Um, I just want to make sure we got. I show you all the all the ones we we did together. Okay, and the new one. Oh, uh, I think that McMurray, full McMurray, the forest fire. Yeah. So this is before the forest fire. This is end of uh, March. Um, beginning of April, and then uh, this is after the forest fire. So you can see, you can see pretty clearly where um, they, it. So this is just uh, see. Sometimes the, there is cloudy conditions. So this is the red spectrum. Um, uh, I think the one. That one actually shows r really where it's burning. It has a uh, much higher, higher signal, I think. Yeah, higher red signal. And near infrared should portray a similar story. Yeah, so this is before. It looks um, quite uniform. And then after this area. So NDVI will tell you an uh, even clearer story uh, monitoring. So this is uh, April 30th and May 16. Look at this large burnt burnt area. Yep. Okay. Um, the next one I'm gonna show is um, um, for a large region. I just want to show how powerful this can be. Uh, for example, for China, it's a continent of China. It's really uh, it's a huge region. And we can take a look at, say, one month from now, and uh, for nine days, um, what's the climate forecast is going to be like. So for example, I, I'm interested to take a look at precipitation rate and then the, the temperature, ground temperature. And then we can submit this query. And I can show you, um, I, you know, the same query I just did a little bit right before I start the session. Um, this has a lot of uh, file because a lot of files because um, it's every six hours. So every six hours or for ten days, uh, it's it's a lot of data, and it can be done uh, actually pretty straightforward, pretty easily. So this is a temperature profile. You see how many files we have. <laughs> I'll just scroll down. And then this is precipitation. And you can see how the precipitation moves uh, every six hours in the region. Yeah. So um, the last query, see, that's already come back. So it's amazing. Um, the last query I actually want to show you is something um, very interesting is a uh, drone data. So satellite a lot of times has cloud problem, then it can block the image. And also it's so far away. I think the highest resolution satellite is three meter uh, uh, for some private companies. And and the um, the public uh, publicly available one, the European Sentinel satellite is 10 meter. That's uh, about the best. But for drones, what we can do with drones is um, it's another level of resolution that, that we can achieve, um, both spatially and temporary. So here is, um, so I actually want to do the same query, just to show you what this query is about, OK? So we go back to the query page. And this is the location. Actually, that's how I find the location, is uh, we actually have um, All right, so let me. So we experiment here with drone data that we collected ourselves um, in our research center. So we are in New York, outside the city.
pretty easy to find because we are on the uh, on the reservoir. Yeah, so we have a very special building. It's a uh, curved shaped, a beautiful building, and you can define the area very easily. Like I mentioned before, use the area tool and just do selection. And what we are doing here is, I just want to take a look at the, the the latest data we have collected by John. It's called IBM John data and it has a spectrum called red spectrum and we want to compare it to the satellite data um, just for you know just for comparison purpose and also compare to the um, I think to the red spectrum here so that's why you see two and submit the query and what you you'll get back is um, uh, data like this so this is the research drone data. The drone, you know, the images, you know, a tiny little bit image. Uh, this is uh, about like a couple hundred pictures um, stitched together. We have an automatic program that can do it. And you can see the building and all the cars. Actually, the, the resolution of the drones is about two centimeter. Uh, it's actually higher than the, the open stream map that the, the rendering map we can uh, it let, let us do so um it's it just offers something that's uh, beyond our you know regular satellite resolution it's it's much higher and for comparison of course i have a medium resolution satellite here it's modis uh, with landsat and with sentinel the resolution will be uh, much better but still nothing compared to the drone and this is how uh, a 250 meter the image look like because we're just only a few pixels big basically I think something like six pixels <laughs> okay yeah so I hope that gave you a pretty good introduction on how to use um, our user interface and how to use the jobs page um, the jobs page oh, okay I think I forgot one thing was um, when we have, for example, when we have a picture, uh, you can also change the color table. Remember the color table we actually talk about? Um, you define it. You can choose one and then the color will change. And uh, for some of the data, it's it's uh, can be very, very useful to distinguish features. Okay. All right, so next section, we're actually going to talk about API. So I'd like to use a little tool called um, uh, REST Client. So remember, we, we actually saved some of these. OK, so it's very simple. You just copy and paste the API string uh, plus the web server is sent and of course it will ask you for authentication that's the same as your username and password and um, okay so this is the results it comes back and there's a little bit you know JSON it's the JSON format um, the web browser is very slow today Okay, I guess, yeah, because it's a lot of data. Uh, so that's that is how a uh, basic API call. And then you can, of course, you can convert this into a curl command or wget command in your code very easily. Uh, so this is a point query. And point query, you can actually also make it a CSV. I think it's called type format. Let me see. have to check so this is also in the in the menu okay yeah I think things I yeah some some of like uh, uppercase lowercase I probably messed it up okay so the next type is is 
how do you deal with a Polygon query? Because it's not going to be uh, like this. It's going to be a lot of data, and it's going to be packed in a GeoTIFF format. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Okay. I'm just going to take out uh, this part and paste. And when you do copy and paste, be very careful because Windows sometimes will add, uh, you know, blank space onto your string. So be very careful. That can cause a lot of errors. So this is good. Okay, the type is polygon. This interval, this data layer, and then this filtering condition, and then we'll say send. And what this get back is it give you the very important is a job ID, and also give you the status of of your query. And once the query is done, you can access uh, the status very easily. I think, uh, I think it's called query jobs. Yeah, query jobs. And I need to copy this. Okay. All right. And then it says uh, the status is running. I think it should be done very quickly. And then once it's done, um, you just need to put in uh, download. And of course, this doesn't work in the REST client. I think the method should be, I don't know. Um, but if you put it in, put in the web browser, it will let you download the thing. But I want to. I want to take a look at the status first, make sure it's complete. Okay. It's still running. So let's just give it uh, a couple minutes. Um, I just want to go back to the query page. Yeah, I think it should show up in the yeah, I think it should show up in the, uh, is it this one, 34747192. Yeah. Okay, it says succeeded. Okay, so now I put in here download and say go. And it just say tell you save the file. Then you can save the file to your computer. And you have you have all the GeoTIFF. Yep. So that concludes the tutorial for today. And then you can see, yeah, uh, actually in your user inf interface, it also show it's uh, available, and you can download now. Yeah. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, welcome to pass. <laughs>